sacred world beneath the cloud Older than time but vanishing now It cradles the roots, it holds the rain And still we treat it with disdain All it breathes, the spring it bears, the fall Where carbon sleeps and creatures crawl It's the oldest story ever told at all Call soil the elixir of life More than dirt, more than strife It fights the flame, it calms the flood It turns our sweat into leaf and bud Good evening, wherever you're joining from, and a very happy and productive World Soil Day. Welcome to this special webinar from the Aurora Soil Security Think Tank, based at the University of Sydney. Our think tank's mission is to develop and promote the concept of soil security, and to work towards a global agreement to secure our soil for generations to come. Soil is essential to life. It is the living skin of the earth supporting food production, regulating water and climate, cycling nutrients, and underpinning biodiversity. In short, without soil, there is no life. Every day on December 5th, we'll celebrate this vital resource. This year's theme is Healthy Soils for Healthy Cities, and we're considering it through the lens of soil security. This year's theme invites us to look beyond the farm and the forest to the very ground beneath our cities. When we think of soil security, we often picture vast rural landscapes, fields, rangelands or forests. But today, we'll shift our perspective. Let's look under our own feet, beneath our homes, streets, gardens and parks. 
because soil security is not only a rural concern, it is an urban necessity. So, what exactly do we mean by soil security? The concept was first introduced by Professor Alex McBratney and his colleagues in 2014. It is an assessment framework to safeguard soil ability to perform various roles from now and into the future. It integrates more than just the biophysical aspects of the soil, but also the economical, social and governance aspects, built around five key dimensions, which is also known as the five C's of soil security. The first C refers to capacity, what the soil can do. It relates to the, its inherent properties and potential. The second C is the condition. Can the soil continue to perform its role? How is it currently performing? The third C refers to capital. What is the value of the soil? By recognizing soil as an economical asset, we begin to understand that it's worth protecting. Fourth C is connectivity. What bonds do people have with soil? The linkages between soil and humanity. The last C or the fifth C is the codification. What policies or laws exist for soil? It relates to the governance frameworks to protect and manage soils. All of these dimensions enable us to assess soil's role in supporting ecosystem and communities, much like we evaluate for water security, energy security, or food security. Applying this framework to urban soils, where human activity dominates and natural processes are interrupted, creates both new challenges and new opportunities for research, policy, and community engagement. More than half of humanity now lives in cities, a figure expected to reach 70% by 2050. Yet, in our urban environments, soil is often invisible. Beneath the concrete and asphalt lies an ecosystem that quietly supports the city. Urban soils anchor trees, parks, gardens, and green roofs that improve air quality and reduce heat. Filter water and reduce stormwater runoff, protecting our waterways. Store carbon and regulate local climates. Provide habitats for earthworms, microbes, fungi, and insects, tiny engineers of life. And even contribute to mental health and well-being, giving us spaces to grow and play and connect with nature. Urban soils are in many ways the unsung heroes of sustainable cities, yet they are also among the most degraded and threatened. Compaction from construction, sailing by pavement, contamination by pollutants, and neglect all undermine the ability to function. Soils naturally take their shape through a variety of soil formation factors, including the climate, paramaterial, and time. However, in recent centuries, the primary driving factor has actually been human influence. Uh, this is true of most soils, but it's particularly relevant to urban soils. Uh, these soils are hybrid creations, a mixture of natural material uh, and human influence. In fact, scientists have created separate soil orders specifically to account for this human factor. In the Australian soil classification, for example, uh, we recognize anthroposols, soils that have been significantly modified by human activity. Now you might be thinking, you just said all soils have been modified by human activity, so aren't they all anthroposols? Well, I mean, it is true that they have all been influenced by human activity. Uh, but anthroposols are typically regarded for soils that where the original soil has been buried uh, or when there are artifacts of human activity throughout the topsoil. As an aside, the classification recognizes that sealed surfaces such as streets and roads, they're actually considered as non-soils um, because they're unable to support plant growth. Um, other soil taxonomies uh, have this similar distinction. Uh, for instance, the world reference base, which is uh, quite prevalent in Europe and around the world, uh, they recognize technosols, uh, soils that contain artifacts such as bricks, asphalt, or construction waste, uh, as well as anthrosols, which are soils that have been significantly modified uh, by uh, cultivation and habitation. Within cities, we can broadly think of two different soil types that are relevant for soil security. The first is phenosols, which are surface soils that have been reshaped or created by human activity. You've got garden beds, landscape parks and sports fields. These are often shaped by human activity through various factors such as uh, drainage pipes, uh, compost or gravel uh, to allow soil to better serve its role. Um, this role is generally selected based on the value that 
we assign it to society at the time, what is most suitable for it. Um, and generally there's some consideration given to ensure that the right soil is selected for the right role. Um, for instance, looking at the site of the 2000 Olympics, um, Historically, it was a site of salt marsh from wetlands uh, that had been used as a dumping ground in the 1960s um, for human, for household and industrial waste. Obviously, it was repurposed and restored to facilitate the 2000 Olympics, and it's now a flourishing outdoor space for communities to connect with nature and the soil. Um, the second soil type relevant for soil security is the genus salt, uh, which are naturally developed, uh, naturally developed soils that persist within the city, uh, independent of human activity. Um, these soils carry ecological and historical value uh, and they deserve active conservation. Um, these soils can then inform and provide in indications into the capacity of the associated phenosol. Additionally, we can then assess the condition of the phenosol by comparing its properties and attributes to the associated genosol. So looking back at the Sydney 2000 Olympics, uh, the Olympic Park, sorry, um, we know that the, much of the sites around that area uh, have been significantly degraded, they've been restored, they've been changed. So it's not really right to call them phenosols, even if they do look similar to what they might have been historically. Um, but looking in adjacent suburbs where there hasn't been this significant human modification, um, we can see that they probably might provide a better indication of what the genosol is. Obviously both phenosols and genosols, they provide distinct functions uh, and they facilitate different pressures. Uh, recognizing this diversity helps us uh, to better recognize soil cities as not soilless landscapes, but as mosaics of living, evolving soils. Uh, understanding the nature is the first steps towards their protection. So what's your thing? Your soils? We first need to understand the current state of those soils and now there's this thing called the soil security framework uh, that can be used to evaluate urban soils. What are those that I mentioned? Using the soil security framework we evaluate urban soils across five dimensions. Capacity, what can these soils do? Can they support plant growth, infiltration and microbial life? What is their texture, structure, nutrient status and drainage characteristics? Some urban soils have surprising resilience. Others may need a little rehabilitation to restore even basic functions. Condition. How are they performing now? Are they compacted by traffic and construction? Are they contaminated by, uh, with heavy metals, hydrocarbons, pollutants? Do they still support healthy biological activity, swarms and microbes? What is their value, capital? Urban soils contribute to cooling, carbon storage, stormwater control, and public amenities. They have economic value too, contributing to property prices and reducing infrastructure costs through ecosystem services. Assessing their natural capital, or urban pedogenic capital, helps justify investment and in soil conservation. Connectivity. How do soils connect to other systems? Are they part of the green corridors, stormwater networks, or biodiversity zones? Do urban planning systems recognize these connections? How do users perceive the role of soil um, in fulfilling these functions for the landscape? Finally, codification. What rules and policies govern them? Are soils included in urban environmental legislation and planning schemes? Do cities have standards for topsoil reuse, remediation, or ceiling limits? Assessing urban soils is not always straightforward. Reference soils may no longer exist and the data may be patchy, but measurement leads to management. We must know our soils before we can secure them. Urban soil faces a host of challenges, but two stand out, contamination and sealing. Contamination results from industrial legacy sites, road runoff, waste disposal and atmospheric deposition. It can threaten food safety in community gardens and expose residents to toxins. Managing these risks requires mapping, remediation and reuse guidelines. Soil sealing. The covering of soil with MP impervious surfaces destroys soil function altogether. Once sealed, soil cannot breathe, infiltrate or regenerate. Globally, 
millions of hectares are lost to sealing each year. Urban planning must therefore prioritize permeable surfaces, green roofs and nature-based infrastructure. These strategies maintain soil function and strengthen resilience to urban heat and flooding. We've lost our connection to it, but it's not too late to reconnect. We need to know our urban soil, to recognise it, to check its condition, and most importantly, to care for it when it's struggling, because diverse urban soil in prime condition means vital cities, vibrant communities, and a sustainable planet. Today on World Soil Day, let's remember, diversity matters even in a concrete jungle, and in that jungle, soil matters more than we recognise. And it's up to each of us to know it, secure it, nurture it, and give it the attention it deserves. Soil security in this city is not a luxury, it's a necessity for a livable, resilient and sustainable future. Our shared task is simple but powerful. Let's recognize urban soil as valuable and multifunctional. Let's assess and manage soil within its capacity. Let's protect it from sealing, contamination and neglect. Engage communities in its care and stewardship and embed soil protection into our planning and policy frameworks. If you'd like to be more involved with Aurora, our global soil security think tank, we invite you to join us as a friend of soil security. Just to scan the QR code in the top left corner while you enjoy our short music video for World Soil Day. Soil, soul of the city by the soil stars. On this World Soil Day, let's extend the idea of soil security beyond the countryside to the city. Let's celebrate not only the soil that feeds us, but also those that cool our neighbourhoods, nurture our parks and grounds us in place. Because whether rural or urban, secure soil means a secure future. Thank you and happy World Soil Day. Happy World Soil Day! Underneath our feet Some clean, some tainted